Uh, hey, everyone. It's Joe Glines here and Jackie Stuck over in Denmark. Yeah. Hey, um, everybody. Yeah. You know, we should we should position you a little bit further up since you're in Denmark and I'm in Texas right there. Our oh, camera so, should just be a little yeah, proportional. Not, anyway, um, and uh, welcome to the, this Auto Hotkey webinar on Intro to Auto Hotkey. Um, I'm Joe Glines. And so we were just explaining here that um, J Jackie and I, we've been doing these for like two years. And the first thing I want to say, which because a lot of you guys are new, is Jackie and I, one is we're not programmers and, and we, we don't even pretend to be, but also we're, we're not a business. This isn't a normal webinar. We're trying to sell you something, right? We're doing this because we love to automate and we love helping people in, um, you know, learn how to automate them and you know, do the work themselves, right? So don't don't think we're trying to try to sell you anything because there's nothing to sell. Auto hockey's free. Um, we have later, we'll mention the Udemy course that we did, but it's it's just helping you learn auto hotkey and hot strings. It's not, we're not trying to pitch anything. So don't worry about that. Um, we have a, a, a poll here, which I think, let me see, 17 to 24. We got a few more people who haven't voted yet. If you can get in your votes um, or not, we'll give them another minute or so. Well, I'm just trying to see, um, you know, who, how many people are totally new and how many people have dabbled with it. So it looks like actually a lot of, most people have still, um, played with it a fair amount, right? We got half that have been doing advanced stuff with it, and then 25% uh, roughly, so a quarter who have, who've done hot keys and hot strings, but that's about it, which is, again, that's what I did for years, right? And, and they're yeah. amazing. Um, we have a ton of other webinars on more advanced topics, um, and we're fine after the end of this hour, we're going to open up to questions, and obviously since this is an intro to auto hot key, um, oh, sorry, I thought you guys could see this and pulling. Okay. Sure. Sure. Results. Sorry. Now it should be out there, hopefully. Um, yeah, yeah, you must, uh, please say if you can see it. Yeah, it seems as if everyone can actually see it now. That's good. I, I, and I'm just catching, by the way, which a lot of you people know, there's a chat available. Um, and so I, everyone's saying hi and hello. Sorry, I was uh, elsewhere. Um, and, and uh, for, especially for all you students out there, hopefully, are you guys done with your finals? Because I, I, I remember what that life was like then, and I'm glad I don't have finals. Yeah, yeah, before Christmas, that's the thing that you're thinking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, finals so, ended last week. Um, mm -hmm. One exam left. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we're, we're happy to see you here, Captain, and everyone else. Um, so let's see, where were we? At 3.08, it's a good time. So... Um, so Jackie and I, I don't know, I guess we gave a, a decent enough introduction. Um, let's, and let's keep it at that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and move forward. So that we had 69 people register, which is awesome. Um, everyone starts off muted, not because Jackie and I think we're the end all be all. It's just because if we all try to talk at one time, it would be, you know, Babylonia all over again. Um, but if you have a question, you can, there's a button somewhere you can raise your hand or you can type in the chats the easiest. Um, let me close that poll. And um, in Jackie or I, depending on which one of us is talking, one of us does our best to try to monitor that chat. And we may not answer your question right away if the person speaking is, you know, in the middle of something, but we'll get your question answered there. Or if you have a really advanced question, just say you have a question and then you can unmute yourself and then actually ask the question if you want to, if you don't want to type it all out. Uh, oh, and let's go the right direction. Um, and just FYI, so I think we mentioned this last month, but um, Jackie and I have been working on like some kind of podcast kind of stuff. They'll be on YouTube as well as an MP3 format, um, and we're gonna we're gonna make those available in January. So those are coming. Yeah. Um, and we always start off our webinar with um, I shouldn't say start off, but the first thing when we get into it is uh, an example of a script. So. Uh, this one, this is one of the classic ones. It was, I actually, I looked at when it was created. It was, it was a long time ago, but it's the minimize um, to tray um, tool, which actually there, it's interesting. There was no author. So I guess maybe Chris, the, the author of auto hotkey wrote it, uh, but yeah, perhaps let's go ahead. So this is the script and I'm going to launch it by hitting this blue button. And now, um, now there's this little green H down here, right? So the hotkey, which, which by looking in here, I can see somewhere thought I saw it on right top anyway it's it's Windows H if I hit Windows H it will minimize whatever I'm in 
into your system tray, it just basically disappears. So if I do this a couple times, right, now they're gone until I hit Windows U for unhide. And, and those that reverses the order of what you hid. So this is what I'm sure there's a name for them, but a lot of, I used to see, you know, movies from years ago, programmers, you know, be sitting there playing a video game and they always had like, basically it was a hot key. They could hit it and it would switch the game out, you know, hide the game and then they'd have their work in front of them, right? In, in, a, in a, a blink of an eye. Um, yeah, the but, boss key. Yeah. <laughs> the boss key. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was an example of it. It, it was it was from someone wrote this in auto hotkey a, a long time ago. Um, oh, there it is. 2005. Oh, it hmm. even it started off in 2004. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I, I can't even remember, but I, I do believe that auto hotkey was started just around there. Yeah, or at least it broke off from uh, auto back uh -huh. then. So, um, so that was the, the example script we had this time. It's I'll, Oh, by the other thing I should have mentioned was everything in this deck that we're going through um, later, either tonight or tomorrow, um, I email out in a link, uh, a, a link to the recording of the webinar, as well as we'll have a link to the resources that we have in this deck. So don't worry about taking notes or yeah. anything like that. Um, so that was that. Let me go ahead and, now in auto hockey, I'm, I'm walking through baby steps for people who are totally new to this. So this is that script running. I'm gonna right click on it. Oh, actually that's interesting because they, they have special ones there. But I um, now I just exit out of that script. So it's no longer running. Um, so first yeah, off- Yeah, the interesting, the interesting part about the one that you showed, Joe, is that it has kind of entry level stuff yeah. in it. So it's a really, really great one to actually go and study for this because it has Windows activations, minimizations, and as you showed yourself, it can actually build a small menu for your tray and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So it, it has some really good commands in it. That's yeah, and this is, this is auto hotkey code right here, by the way, um, yeah. that's that script. Yeah. So um, let's get back into this. So, so actually you were close, Jackie. So. Um, Auto Hotkey, first off, it's a, it's a free open source Windows scripting language tool, right? It's, uh, it works on virtually any running version of Windows. I've, I've, I still have an XP machine and I use it whenever I start it. I, I can run it on that. But, um, you know, it runs great on Windows 7, Windows 8, um, Windows 10, even uh, Millennial. And z z z what was the, I'm blanking on the Z one. Is there a one that starts with a Z? One that starts with a C? Z. Um, uh, Windows, Vi no, V, Vista, that's what it was, yeah. Um, Vista, yeah, fair enough. So anyway, so, but it only runs on Windows computers, so if you're a Mac user, you, you gotta find other resources. There are, by the way, I've seen for Macs, I've seen like a hot string type of program, and I've seen like a hot keys kind of program, but Auto Hotkey does an amazing amount of other things. Um, yeah. So it was written in 2003 by Chris Mallett, and, and it was an offshoot of Auto It, which is a tool very similar in a lot of things as to auto hockey, but Chris wanted to do certain things with it that other people didn't want to do. Um, and so he was a developer for auto it, and then he created auto hotkey and he's no longer um, actively writing code, but um, where I think we're all really grateful of his, his initial work. Yeah. It's a super user friendly for non programmers type code that you can start reading and not feel overwhelmed. Like I know when I look at C sharp or something, it's even, now I'm getting familiar with object oriented stuff. It's still really hard for me to read. Whereas auto hotkey, it's the code often makes sense to you. Um, it's intuitive. Um, the the scripts also you can you can take an auto hotkey script and compile it, right click on it and compile it and convert it into an executable that then then you can give to somebody else that doesn't even have auto hotkey installed and they can run it as a program on their computer. Uh, in the other yeah yeah. Yeah, per se, you don't actually need to learn how to compile anything. That's right, it's just yes. A, a right click on, on a script, as long as yeah. you have a hotkey installed, yeah. Which, which actually, to your point, Jackie, like a lot, I mean, a lot of people don't know. Other languages, it's it's a lot of work to compile it, right? You, you wouldn't think it'd be that hard, but like you got to do, I shouldn't say a lot of work. If you know what you're doing, it's not. But for someone new to it, it can be complex to just to compile it. Um, and take time and, and it's just, it's, it's not fun. No, I, I remember the webinar we had with uh, what's of age. Yeah. 
where he was uh, compiling it live and he had to go back and change that and go there and make right. sure that it was using those and right. uh, it was it, it was daunting that's for yeah. sure so the the other thing the really nice thing is you don't even have to install like after you compile that program or any of the stuff you don't have to install it on so like if you're at work and you don't have admin rights and you, for whatever reason you can't install it a hotkey you can do the work elsewhere and create your program and then just run it from a thumb drive so it's it's really nice that you don't actually have to install anything yeah all right so let's move on to the next one so here's at a high level what can auto hotkey do um so hot strings are are basically think about like text expansion or doing stuff in ms word where you type a couple letters actually the spell check in word is a great example you'll type something excuse me and it um it'll automatically replace some of the words in there in the spell check because you mistyped something. Um, but that's basically what a hot string is, is you, you type a couple things and the computer will automatically replace it for you. Um, hot keys are great ways to, to generally speaking, to launch, launch or to trigger events of some sort. So you can launch a program, you can launch um, apps, you can d launch a message box, wh whatever you want. Right, they're basically a key combination where you'll hit a button and it will something will take action. Uh, then there's things like um, manipulating files and folders, so you can automatically go through and you know rename files or move files or delete files, copy files, anything you want, or obviously read the files too. Um, actually, I'll jump around a little here because the regular expressions, um, when you you can go through and read a file, and then regular expressions allow pattern matching in text and you could parse it out and look for certain words in it um, and then you know automate the, the 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 renaming of them or grouping people together or what you want right it's it's amazing regular expressions are they're they're pretty they're what's a, a bit of a steep learning curve but boy they're worth it when you need that kind of a, a ability yeah um, the you can automate a ton of other programs now uh, there's several different ways auto hockey connect to live programs like with outlook word excel um or internet explorer they have what's called a com object um that you can connect to and programmatically same as vba is doing you know automate what's going on inside them and it's it's really amazing and it's pretty easy to do once you get the hang of it uh, but there are other ways if you if it doesn't have that that like um I think VLC doesn't have a com object, if I remember correctly. Adobe does, but there are other programs that, that don't have a com object uh, built into them that you can still send messages to. So there's a lot of different ways, which are too technical for this, but there are amazing amount of ways you can control their programs that you wouldn't think you'd be able to do. Um, yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I'm, it, I'm just acknowledging what you're saying. Yeah, uh -huh. it's. It is because it's 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 amazingly powerful, but man, there are, it's it's a deep um, rabbit hole once you start going down the different ways you can connect to programs. Uh, the the web service or sorry web scraping, that's where basic web scraping. I, it's really both ways. Although scraping kind of implies you're taking down, but you can automatically go to a web page and grab what data you want. Like let's say dump it into a text file or into Excel, um, or you can manipulate filling out forms or however you want to do it. Right? It's it's both taking down or putting up text onto a web form. Um, web service APIs. Um, uh, probably everyone's heard of APIs and when usually when people mention APIs nowadays generally speaking they're talking about web service APIs which are services that are online and you can programmatically co connect to them and send a query to them and they'll return data in a certain format and so it's kind of like web scraping um, but it's just a little different in that you're not getting HTML back you're getting usually XML or JSON and you can automate a lot of your functionality a lot of Companies use vendors that have APIs to their tools, and it really opens up an amazing amount of um, stuff that you can crank out and be so much faster at, stuff that you do manually. Um, if you want to create GUIs, uh, even simple just GUIs, to have a couple buttons to click to do different things, um, it's really easy in AutoHotKey compared to other languages to, to create a GUI. Uh, I mentioned the regular expressions earlier, but it's basically pattern matching where you're trying to look for certain things in text and grab certain parts of it and, and either grab them or, or move them around or whatever you want. Um, and then there's a ton of stuff with audio image uh, around screen clipping or OCR and extracting or, or manipulating. Um, and then you can tie them into other programs like FFmpeg. We had a webinar a couple back where um, I was demonstrating one where I, I automated um, recording using F automating 
FFmpeg to record my desktop. And then I actually made it where after it would record it, it, it could, <clears throat> you could also say, hey, do you actually want to convert this into an animated GIF? And so it was just like a yes, no. And if I hit yes, it would take that video and convert it into an animated GIF for me all automatically. And this is all free, free stuff, right? Um, and again, there's so many more things we could talk about. One of the things that you could say about these things is, of course, within the Autohot community, community the size of it and all of that stuff, you might not have that much that is um, pre-made for you in a complete sense. Like you don't have something that you always point to when someone wants to, let's say, connect to an API or if someone wants to do auto manipulation, there isn't someone who has always made a big library that is the go-to thing. So you might end up either having to learn a bit more uh, of how to actually do the nitty gritty code to do it. But yeah, normally you will have to write less code or learn less because others have already done the same things before you. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, just a matter of finding the right library to do the thing. Yeah. That's one yeah. of the things. Yeah. yeah. And that were like when I used Python, um, Python, it has a lot of libraries out there, but there's like virtually nothing comes with Python itself. And so you always have to go find, and then even then to Jackie's point there is like, even when you find the right library, you still often have to write your own stuff to use with it. Um, so with auto hockey, there's a lot of built in things that, that, that I really like having that's already in there. Um, and I was reading through some of the comments here, and and I, I think it was, it was a cat mode and said sometimes even when you know what you're doing, com compiling something can be you know a lot of work. Um, yeah. And then um, I saw Geek Dude was mentioning doing some web scraping for configuration stuff. So yeah, everyone. I mean, once you start automating, I, I got to say it's like addictive. So I, I'll warn you there, right? Jackie and I are the dealers, and we're trying to give you a little taste of something, and and you're going to get addicted to it. So um, don't say we didn't warn you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, before we get into coding, um, and again, I'm going to email all this stuff out to you, so don't worry about it, but I wanted to have it all together. So we're going to actually walk you through how to install an editor. So usually most editors, if you hit F1 when you're on a certain word, the help for auto hockey will pop up and often it's, it's really good help and, and they have examples, um, but there's also a really good website. There's an amazing forum where people like, like a bunch of people that are on the call are there and they'll answer questions. Um, Stack Overflow is another great ones for usually a little bit simpler of a, of a problem than you're looking for on the forum, um, which also has a ton of example scripts as well. But they, um, if I have more complex problems, I'll, I'll go there versus if I'm trying to interact with a certain you know command, I might look at Stack Overflow first. And then Discord, <clears throat> there's a lot of people who they, they just like auto hotkey and they hang out there and they chat with other people. And if you go there, there's people live and you can post your code and they'll, they'll often help you um, work through it. Um, and then Reddit's another one where you can, um, there's, there's a decent amount of solutions there and people are often, it's not quite as, I should have, you know what let me do is I should move the order of that where, oops. Um, going from order because reddit discord is is much more interactive and they're live reddit they're often people are hanging out there but it's not quite it's not like discord right so um and even then i put stack overflow that one a little bit higher up because the forum there's often people there that are pretty responsive yeah. but um then we have like i have my site the automator and i have a lot of examples especially on web scraping all of our webinars we have links to um api calls um and then um, using Excel is another big one, some stuff on Outlook, and then customizing site, which is going to be the editor that we actually walk you through installing. Uh, Jackie has a lot of different stuff on his site. Do you want to mention it all, Jackie, some of the stuff you cover? I don't know exactly how much I have, but I, I made a few um, tutorials on there, maybe five, ten, and, and a couple of other articles. And I'm I'm not really actively updating it anymore. I'm still answering uh, queries that come in, um, allowing people to comment on the different tutorials that I'm doing and stuff like that. You could always reach me there. So so in, in that aspect, it's it's still up there. Um, and, and the one thing I'd say, which I mean, you you're far more advanced than I am in this, but you touch more on your website on GUI stuff. I think that's actually 
that and the it, it, you cover a, you know GUIs in a fair amount where I almost never talk to GUIs. Mm -hmm. um, computer Edge is from Jack. Um, do you remember Jack's last name? Dunning. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. And he has he has really intro. He's got a couple actually auto hotkey. Um, what are they called the, on Amazon? The Kindle books, books right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he'd rather you you know buy the actual like PDFs. Um, but anyway, they're um, they're very good intro hotkey and hot string type stuff. He has a book on regular expressions as well. Um, and then there's um, I got quite a few videos up on YouTube. Um, Silvery Born, this is um, his name in the um, videos. I'm trying to think of what he calls himself. I it's, I'm blanking on it. Hellbent. Um, but he's got, especially on GUI stuff, he's got a lot of videos on GUIs. Um, AHK Toots is actually Raptor X's um, channel on YouTube. And then About Script, it's a bit old, but it's still, he had some good stuff on using objects um, and things and some web scripting stuff. Um, and then there's, ta-da, a course on hot strings from Jackie and I um, on using hot strings. And so if you want to go dive deep yeah. into hot strings, um, it, it walks you through a lot of different, the, the little speci speci specific things that, that can be troublesome. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a fine video course. Yeah. So let's go ahead and st I'm going to go ahead and li do this live, right? Watch something break, of course. But I'm going to download go to the download. So here's the actual download page. Let me download it. Oh, looks like I already have it saved. Um, well, you know, what? I'll just, I'll download as that and then it, it's usually pretty darn fast. Up and when done. Um, the one difference is going to be, I already have probably like five or six auto hotkey scripts running right now. So when I go to install it, it's going to say, Hey, we need to close and reopen all these scripts. Is that okay? So that, that's the, I think the biggest difference that anyone here is going to see. Yeah, so that's they, probably the thing. And the reason it's so slow right now is probably because of all the video streaming. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember if, uh, how, what was the size under four mix or something? It said 3.3, I think. 3.3. Uh, yeah. So on your end, when you install this from fresh, it, um, it'll say like, you know, something like regular or advanced, um, pick or custom. I think it's custom. So that's right, Jackie. Um, yeah, what you so. want to do is either pick the advanced or custom and choose the, um, we recommend choosing the Unicode 32 bit version of auto hotkey. Yeah. Um, it's Unicode just nice because then you have all the Unicode characters, you don't have to worry about that. And you can choose 64 bit if you want, but sometimes there's some libraries that aren't in 64 bit. So we just recommend using the 32 bit. Um, yeah. Oh, and th this is what the screen would look like once you get to it. And so I'm going to say that one, L choose, I install mine into a certain spot. Don't worry about that. Just let it default to wherever. Um, I never, I just let everything stay checked and install it. And so this is the window I said, you won't see this one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit reload. That way it'll reload all the ones that I have running. Meanwhile, I'm going to close that. And it's going to pop up here in a second and say it's done. All of this installer GUI and all of that is also done in auto hotkey. Just, just as the point. Yeah. As extra effect. Yeah. All right. And we're done. Yeah. So by the way, if you saw like this clock up here, I have, that's also an auto hotkey script. Cause I don't like, I figure why have my start menu. Right. Um, so I'll exit out of that. And now on the next one. So, um, auto hockey, it's a, you can open the text, the, I'm sorry, the scripts that you write in, in, in like notepad, it's a plain text file. So you can use any editor you want. Um, there are three that we recommend, um, that you, you at least use instead of using just notepad. And it's basically because you get the IntelliSense, you get debuggers with it and some other stuff. So there's, um, site for auto hotkey. Um, and, and that's what we're going to go ahead and install in this webinar. And then Auto Hockey Studio, that's written by Maestri. That's actually, I've switched over to it um, in my default coding stuff. But um, I use Site for forever. And um, for our purposes, we thought we'd use Site for Auto Hockey in the webinar. 
And then Notepad++, um, neither Jackie or I have used it hardcore, but it has all the same functionality really as the other, the other two as well, I mean, or, or close to it. Um, by the way, yeah, say, yeah by the go way. ahead, Jack. Well, let me, I'm gonna start downloading this, go ahead and talk. Yeah, okay. Um, to me, at least, uh, I, I, I'm still using both AutoHotKey Studio and Site. And the thing with Site is it's just visually more, um, I'm, I'm looking for the words right now, but it doesn't actually have that much uh, space and, or screen noise as, as a Studio has when you first open it. So yeah. If you're new to the language, uh, SETI is, is maybe more easy for you to just open it and see more of something that looks a little bit more like notepad plain. Yeah. And I remember writing for maybe a few weeks in notepad, just a normal one with the black text on the white background. It was okay. I wasn't doing anything very advanced. But just the idea or just the effect of actually having uh, numbered lines and coloring of the syntax, which you get with any one of these um, editors if you have at least installed the needed stuff. And SETI comes automatically with the needed um, syntax highlighting and the same with Studio. Notepad++, you actually need to go out and, and find the correct uh, plugins to make it work um, or color out of hotkey code correctly. Um, but again, there is a tutorial online of how yeah. to do that. Well, and our very first webinar was actually covering auto hotkey studio. And so I see Robert asked about, should he be using, um, you know, what basically what editor, I don't know if he's saying auto hotkey studio there or not, but um, auto hotkey studio does some pretty amazing things in it. Um, it, it, it just, it also takes a while to get used to, right? It's, um, but it, it, it's, once you start getting used to it, it's, it's pretty addictive. It's hard for me to, to not use it now. Um, yeah, but, but um, you could for, as, as an example, you could show Studio just because you probably have it open already. Yeah, it, just it, it is. Of, uh, yeah, I'll, give an idea. Well, yeah, I mean, this is Studio uh, here. Um, yeah. and, and the one thing I'd say, this is the only slightly negative um, is what, what I would say to it. It's not an, even a negative. It's just most people, when you first open a program, you, you want a toolbar, right? And he doesn't have it. You can make your own toolbar, but he doesn't have a default toolbar built into it. And for people mm -hmm. that are new to it, that's, that's like, where's my save button, right? And he's into au automating things. And so he has it where, hey, you hit control S, right? It's, you use your hotkeys. Um, but yeah, there's some really cool functionality that yeah. we don't have time to cover today. Um, I'd say go watch it webinar or ping me separately and we can walk through it sometime. So let me go ahead and install um, site. Again, just let it default. Um, actually, I'm gonna set it as the default editor. Oh, it's currently running. Where is it running? Oh, that's, the, that's that one, there we go. So let me close it. And then um, after it installs, all right, this, we're going to get, we're going to let it install here, but while it's doing that, um, there are a couple things we wanted to cover before we get into our first script. All right, now it's done, and, it, and I think it actually will open. Here we go, and let's go ahead and close this, so I can right click here and say close, and now this is my editor. Um, before we actually start coding, there's just a couple things we wanted to touch on just to help you before we jump into the code. The first one is, and actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy it from here because this is actually the exact code, is this single instance force, put that somewhere, oh, and I gotta, I gotta tell this, auto, it's an auto hockey script. Let me, let me save this as, if I had saved it as an, something that ends in AHK, um, let me throw out my desktop. then it would, have, it would have been automatically color coding that for me. This single instance force, this tells AutoHotKey every time you launch this program, hey, if it's already running, don't launch a second instance of it, only keep one instance running in memory. Otherwise, if you don't have it there, or if you say single instance, um, what's the, what is the one where it's not force? Ignore is one of is the that what it is? possible ones. 
Yeah, um, it's interesting. It wasn't uh, doing the auto assist there. Oh, there it goes. Single instance. But it's still, it seems like it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I see it there below it. Um, but yeah, ignore and off. Okay. But um, if you don't have it, it's going to ask you every time, do you, do you want to launch a new script? So make sure you have that somewhere in your code. Um, and then uh, the very first time right now, you'll see there's no, I don't have a little green icon with a white H in it in here right the um after i add a little bit to this when i run it you'll see that green h show up in my system tray and that lets you know that the script is actually running um, another thing to just keep in mind as you make edits to your script um you can edit it and you save it but if you don't relaunch it your new your script the changes you made aren't actually in the currently running script so make sure if you are editing your script to save it and then reload your script otherwise it, um, it won't take effect. And then you think something's wrong when actually you haven't even updated the running script yet and you waste time on the wrong stuff. Um, now there's two things, we're, two big things we're covering in this webinar today. There's the hot keys and hot strings are the, the main things. Um, hot keys use modifier keys, right? So the, like this is a control key, the caret, and the pound sign is, or the hashtag is windows. And the plus sign is shift and the exclamation point is the alt key. So um, those, usually you combine them with another key. So like um, I might have like alt T to transpose something. And so I would put alt and T next, I would, I'm sorry, I would put the exclamation point and a T to, to, to do it. And we'll demonstrate this here in a minute. Uh, but I wanted to have a nice little cheat sheet here for you. Actually, you know what, let's, let's do this. Let's copy this. And, and also, oh, you know what I should have put in there? I would, which would have been smart is the um, semicolon is a single inline comment. Um, I don't know the right way to say that. It, it turns it into a comment. Um, yeah. So it, Auto hockey will now ignore everything. Like I can type to the left of this, and this is actual code. But to the right, everything that's green there, that's auto hockey will basically just ignore it. Um, so those are handy to have. And then for hot strings, when you're sending um, like a the the windows key the alt key um, well they are those um the, the shift um, or a semicolon you want to wrap them there's other ways you can do it but the simplest way is to wrap them with cur curly brackets um and and we'll touch on that here in a minute um and also for the hot strings um there is the the tilde n the, the tilde or i'm sorry not tilde but it's on the same key the tick mark it's um on the same key as the tilde which is above your tab so that'll trigger a new line, uh, or if you want to insert a tab, it's it's the tick mark T. All right, so let's start getting into your first hot, um, your first script. Um, and first, let's start with hotkeys, and let's go ahead and we'll launch a browser. So I'll come back here to site. Um, now this is where having these little things up here are helpful. So I'm gonna say, let's do control B, control, so that the caret for control and B for browser and I'm gonna say like run, and now I need the path. So I'm gonna cheat, let's, let's launch Firefox. So I can go to properties, get the path. Usually, sometimes you want the quotes, but it just depends. Um, and now I, I could hit F5 and cite F5. Notice if I mouse over this, it says um, run script, right? Or I can push this little blue diamond and it, really depends for me where my mouse is. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and click this button. And now, look, did you notice down here, this green H show up? Let me exit out of it, which I'll show you that you can hi always highlight the icon, right mouse click and hit exit. Um, if you wanna exit it, or I could have hit edit and it would have pulled up this menu. Uh, but when I launch it, keep your eye down here and we're gonna see that little green H show up. So now I know that script is running. Um, and now if I hold down control and hit B, it's going to launch up oh, and I haven't launched Firefox in a while. Um, so it triggered launching Firefox for me. And of course, Firefox had installs, which I, I should, I should have launched notepad apparently. <laughs> yeah, that, which, that could have been a good idea. Let's, let's do another, let's do, con although control N and here's a good point, right? So control N, we're going to say run notepad. I think that'll work, right? Because that's probably in the yeah. Windows path, right? 
Uh, that should so, that should work. I don't I don't even I don't know what's doing. Um, but here's how I can have more than one hotkey inside my script, right? So I'm gonna save this. Now I'm gonna save it, and I'm gonna. Here's another way I can re I can right click on here and say reload. And yeah, now after you save it. Yeah. Yes, after you save it, right? And now if I hit Control N, it launched Notepad for me. Um, that actually was interesting. If I didn't have this in here, let me comment it out, and I'm gonna save it. And this time, instead of hitting reload, I'm gonna I'm gonna just relaunch it, and that does the same thing. Um, now if I hit Control N, it it you know, I don't, I no longer have that other hotkey for launching notepad. So sites default control N tells it to create a new um, document. So you do have to keep track of what hotkeys do you have? What are you going to conflict with other programs? What we didn't cover in this, but by the way, you can have context sensitive hotkeys. So I can say, Hey, if, if, if Firefox is running, when I do this, do a certain thing versus if Chrome is running, you know, do something else. And yet it's the same key combination that you hit. It's really powerful. Um, yeah, and, and it could be the same thing. Let's say you're here in sight. You actually like uh, the control N to open a new document. You don't want it to open a notepad when you're in sight. So, so yeah, uh, context sensitive hot keys can be a very good idea because, yeah. hey, you might also want it to do specific things when in Word compared to when in PowerPoint or whatnot. Uh, I saw Robert had a question about, so AutoHockey will, will take over keystrokes of running programs. I think a, a way I would rephrase that to say it will it will take precedence, right? It will, it will absorb the hotkey and the program that you're in often won't even see it because AutoHotkey is already triggered. Now you can add, is it the tilde? Is yeah. that, um, if you add a tilde, it will actually, so let's, let's demonstrate. So I'm going to save it and I'm going to relaunch it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to, I'm, I'm really lazy. So, um, I'm going to add another, my browser back is one I use a lot. It's just a key. So, don't, so it might confuse you, but it's near my thumb. So I'm going to say reload. So now I have a hotkey to reload my script. I don't have to right click, go here and find it. I don't have to come up here. I can just hit, actually it's browser forward is what I use. Sorry. Um, So now, now of course, I have to relaunch it once to make it take effect. But watch my icon in the bottom right. Every, I can hit it, and it's reloading it for me, right? So this is one thing I do always, especially in my demo scripts where I'm working and testing things out. I have my reload um, because that way I don't have to go and, and hit a button somewhere, right? It's right near my – it's super close to my thumb, and so it's, it's really easy. Um, but now if I hit Control-N – so did you notice both things happened? It both went to a new one here and it launched Notepad. So the tilde basically says, don't absorb the the key combination I did, but still trigger the event that you wanted to have happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, nice. yeah. Someone in the chat actually came in and said, the last program that actually <laughs> implemented the hotkey. It could be auto hotkey. It could be some other program. Depending on the one that was loaded last, it's actually the one that gets to say what a specific key combination does. Unless, of course, one of them has used, let's say, a key hook or whatnot. Yeah. So that was our first example of using hotkeys. And, and now, you know what, let's, let me show you my main script, just so we're not going to go into it. Oh, actually, let me hit control alt E. I have that built into my main script to pull it up. Um, at near the top. So you see all these, the apps key, by the way, I'm on a lot of keyboards today. The apps key is between, if you look to the right of your space bar, there's an alt key. And then to the right of that, there's this weird looking key. And um, often it's the apps key, which which no one ever uses. And so I use it to trigger launching programs. And so um, you can easily launch. I have mine set to combination with other things to launch a ton of different programs. And so it's just really handy to have um, to launch. It's like having shortcuts right everywhere to launch programs. Um, I also have it like if I was to hit Control Alt S, it would shut down. Actually, I'm sorry, it would suspend my computer. 
versus control alt h sends a dll call to send my computer into hibernate um but you can have it basically do whatever you can have it do more than one thing like my apps b actually launches chrome twice to different locations um to facebook and to linkedin what in the world is that i don't know what that is oh oh sorry <laughs> okay um you know what let's well i don't want to do it it's uh it, it it goes through and reads this file. I have a bunch of file that has a lot of quotes in it. And so it randomly picks a line out of that file and copies it to the clipboard for me. And then I can post it into Facebook and LinkedIn because they're both right up there. But anyway, um, let's close that. And you know what, let's, let's leave the stuff that's here. That way we can share this and it's it won't be gone. And this one, uh, yeah, we'll just move it up to the top. Now let's go ahead and switch on to the uh, using hot strings, which are one of my favorite and Jackie's too, even though he, he doesn't use them, but um. <laughs> I still find them very, very usable. Sure. That's, I, that's the thing. I like teasing you. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to argue with. It's so easy. Right. So yeah. um, like let's, uh, the problem is I, you know what, let me, let me disable cause I have so many running. Um, I'm going to pause my script because I have so many running. I would try to type one, but everything I'd want to type, I already have a hot string for. Um, so let's say I was doing um, my name and I'm tired of writing Joe Glines over and over, right? So you put in two colons and then you put in the um, abbreviation for like what you want to type. So I'm going to say JG period and then two colons and then you put in the text you want to have replaced. Joe Glines. And I'm gonna save this and now I'm gonna reload it. And now, it, to, yeah, okay, good, it worked. Um, and now when I type JG per, oh, period in a space, it dumps in my name, right? It's that easy. It's like, how much easier do you want something to be, right? It's so easy to, to have, you could have paragraphs of things, right? Um, yeah. If you notice where my cursor is, notice it's, it's you know, it's a, it has a space after it. Um, and so that's where if you have like an email address, um, oops, I thought that, <laughs> does it, does the, I thought the pausing it would have, pausing, no, the pausing, you should suspend it if, if you want the, the okay. keys to, so if I, now let me, make sure when you're playing with this, you don't save it with the text that you put in there, right? It'll call, actually, let me undo this. If I save it and try to reload it, it's gonna say there's an error. Oh, where at line 10, oh, that's because this text means nothing to auto hotkey, it can't run, right? Oh, okay, I'll, I'll delete it now, save it and reload it. Um, it still has this message box up there, but um, now it works. So, so if I type JTA period and space, it'll dump it in there fine, but it has a space after it. Well, you know what, often when I'm typing my email address, I don't want the space after it because I'm probably logging into a website or I'm giving it to somebody and I want it to be a hyperlink. So what you can do in AutoHotKey is just simply put an O here and I'm gonna save it and reload it. And now when I type those letters, notice there's no space at the end of it, right? So it's 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 the, these, these two that I just showed you, honestly, like those alone, like, will save you so much time it, 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 it once you get used to it I have hundreds upon hundreds of hot strings and it it's what I would mention is if you start really adopting them have a pattern to them because um, you'll start forgetting when you have too many of them but um, they're so helpful um, let's let's um, let's make it a little more complex now and let's say let's pretend you wanted to write a letter to somebody and you wanted it broken on separate lines and so we would say like he hello. I was going to use my hot string for Jackie's name, but I remembered I don't, the script's not running. Hello, Jackie. Yeah. So I'm going to put in a comma, but the, here's where I want my line break, right? So I would do a, um, that, that tick mark in. Let's do doubles just to space out a little more. My email address is joe at theautomator.com. So, um, and let's do, Now I'm gonna, I'm purposely putting in this exclamation point to, to demonstrate something here. So I'm gonna save it, reload it. And now when I type JTA period in the space, so it, it put in the hello Jackie comma, it double spaced in between here, like I did these doubles here, right? It did everything else for me here out of my com. 
thanks, but notice there's no exclamation point, right? That's because as we mentioned in the, in the other slide, um, ex exclamation points are one of those characters that you gotta wrap them with the curly brace. So I'm gonna save this, reload it. And now when I type JTA period space, there's the thanks. I'm sorry, exclamation point. Um, so, yeah. so those are the three, um, the most, did I have anything else in here? Oops, sorry. In here, oh, adjust cursor location. Okay, so let's say you're doing um, some HTML or anything where, actually, oh, oh, I know. Let's let's say here. I wanted shorter text here. Um, I wanted to have I wanted to have something where I send this a lot, but I want my cursor to be right here so I can type in the person's name every time, and I don't have to backspace to it. So if I extend here down below, I that's thirteen characters. I, I put it in my footer. By the way, sorry, I should have moused over it. Um, so down here, see it says 13, that's how many characters. That's a, in site, I, I customized my status bar. So I don't think that's default, I can't remember. But I'm gonna say here, I'm gonna put in left and then put 13. And so now- yeah, it, You also have the space at the end there, so you, it will not hit the correct place. Oh, I added one, thank you, Jackie. Yeah, thank you, yeah. So now when I reload this and I type, notice where my cursor ends up, JTA period space. So see, it's already right in place where I could then type Jackie, right? And so imagine you're doing this a lot and you don't wanna to have to always go back here. I mean, this is just one example, right? You could be going anywhere you want. It, it's super easy to have it adjust to where you wanna do. I do a decent amount of HTML coding. And so when I'm trying to bold something, I don't have to I have a hot string for my bold command and then it moves back over right into the center in between the tags. And so it's super easy. Yeah. Okay, so those are hot strings. You know what, let's, oh, I don't have my hot string for commenting. Um, I have a hot string that basically does this. It, it puts this in here, this helps break it up. Um, And now I'm gonna comment these, this line out and this line out. And now we're gonna do our last, ex oh man, I'm so used to my hot strings. Um, that's funny, I couldn't have planned that any better. Um, we're gonna do <laughs> copy slash paste to other program. So um, unless anyone has a specific example, what I was gonna do is let's say I had text here in sight and I wanted to paste it into Excel and I had to go back and forth a lot, you know, copy and then go over to Excel and paste and then come back to here and copy and then go over to Excel and paste. Um, unless someone has a, um, a better example, um, we'll use that one. Um, but let's go ahead and start. I just saw some, it was a geek dude had to go. Those, those darn yeah. files. Um, so <laughs> hey, me... you, his final over. Oh, was his, his over? Okay. Yeah. Um, So let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing we'll do is, well, let me get this thing out of the way here. Um, I got a little cheat sheet just in case I get really crazy here and get get lost in my stuff, which I can't find now, so I won't use it. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is um, I like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, you need to blank out your clipboard, right? So I'm gonna do clipboard equals nothing. And then we wanna send control C. Um, actually, you know what, I guess the first thing we wanna do is actually have a hotkey to trigger it, right? So let's say yeah. control B will be the hotkey to do this. Um, so the hotkey is gonna trigger first blanking out the clipboard. And then we're gonna say, um, we're gonna send control C Ooh, boy, if I could type control C. Um, and so that's going to, so that's going to send basically copy. So what you have to keep in mind is when you hit your hotkey, your text should already be highlighted that you want to have copy, right? Um, Cause that one, yeah. it's just, I don't know how to explain it well, but 
that's something you want to have flexible as to whatever it is I highlight, and then that's what I'm going to copy. Now here, what you want to do is um, we could add like a little sleep here because basically you want a way to make sure that the the clipboard gets copied to sorry the content gets copied to the clipboard. So there's a command in AutoHotKey that's called clip wait, and we're going to set it to one second, um, and that's basically. If it doesn't have it, um, you can build in error checking and say, if it comes back with nothing, then let me know. But for now, this is good enough where it'll, it'll wait uh, up to a second, but basically it'll wait for that clipboard to have content. Um, and then now we have it in our clipboard, but now what we want it to do is to automatically um, jump to Excel for us. So first I need to launch Excel. And then um, let's create a blank document. And what I realized was like, um, I don't have my hotkey for launching the, the tool that I usually use. So Window Spy, you can right click any auto hotkey program and this Window Spy tool, it's built into auto hotkey. So that's, this will launch it. And what we're basically doing is I want a way to programmatically identify this Excel windows. Um, and so the main one I use is this like AHK dot or, um, underscore EXE Excel. So I'm gonna copy that and say, um, I'm going to activate that window. I guess I can zoom out a little here. Um, now, I don't, do you, do you, Jackie, normally throw a sleep in there? Uh, I might actually use uh, wind weight active. Oh, okay. Just, just because I want to make sure that the yep. wind. Yeah, active. which is better than a sleep because that way it's, it's spot on the second it's available, then it works. Yeah. Um, is it, is it really the same thing? Just, with uh, with when weight active here instead of, uh, yeah, you could put the wind wind weight uh, active in there at least. But again, I do remember reading that when activate actually already has some built-in functionality to make sure that it actually checks. The, the activation of the window before passing on to the next line. But yeah, the win weight active is, is probably the safest way of doing it. Okay. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and re type a return just basically tells AutoHotKey, once you see this return, stop processing, don't, don't keep going, right? We're going to stop it right here. Yeah, um, that's the thing. Uh, control P doesn't really paste, does it? Ha! No! <laughs> I'm sorry, that's so funny. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm an idiot, but I'm I'm not that big of an idiot. It's close times. That's hilarious. Um oh my god, that's funny. Uh it's funny how different parts of your brain when you're working on this, like you know, kind of go a little haywire. So yeah. so I'm gonna highlight some text and then if I hit control B, let's see what happens. Nothing happened. Did you launch it? I I reloaded it. Hmm. Fair enough. Well, there it goes. Uh, so notice it activated Excel for me, and then it pasted. So here's the other thing you have to remember: is um, now let's say um, this worked exactly like we were hoping, right? And let me minimize this for now. But now, if I come back here to site and I highlight this part and paste it, what's gonna happen? Um, if I hit control B, it's gonna overwrite that cell, right? Well, generally speaking, often in Excel, I wanna be in the next one down. And, and if I forget to move down, right, then that sucks, because I've just overwritten my data. So why don't we go ahead in here, and after we send control V, let's send, um, is it down? down? Yeah. Cool. I'd say here between the paste and the down, I'd I'd probably put in a sleep. Yeah. Yeah, like a hundred. Yeah, oh. why not? Hundred or two hundred. Yeah. So by the way, a thousand. And actually, this is, I don't know if it's entirely universal for all programming languages, but everyone I've looked at, 
1,000 is 1,000 milliseconds. So it, it's, uh, I'm sorry, is one second. One is a, a, a millisecond, but it's 1,000 is one second. And it's like, it seems like a very universal thing across all languages I've, I've worked with. So that's a tenth of a second. Yeah. So now, oh, I, actually, I, I want to, let, let me see. I want to stay, I'm staying on that. And let's say I copied this. Oh, it's that one's still going to overwrite it, but it's going to move one down after it. So let me do it. Yeah. Oh, I keep hitting the wrong hotkey. So see how it arrowed me down? And so now I wouldn't have to, I could come to this one and hit control B and it, it keeps going for me. Right. But hey, you know what? There's one more I could do. Why don't I, if I'm going between site and Excel, why don't I have it after it does this? Let's, um, let's, by the way, control D in site duplicates. Um, so I'm going to duplicate that and then I'm going to have it activate. I'm going to borrow all this. And I'm going to, actually, I'm in sight. So I'm going to grab this window. I'm sorry, this. Oh, I just want that part. So now it'll switch back to site for me. So now if I highlight this, oh, let me reload. There we go. Now control B. So notice it, let me go back. It, it pasted that for me and then switched back to site for me to find my next one. So I could really quickly, right, go through and find things that I want to dump in there, right? And and we've used, what is that, 11 lines, right? Um, so it's, it's, it's super easy. Um, now, don't get me wrong. If you were actually doing stuff between um, site and Excel, both of those happen to have a calm object. And so the sending of keystrokes like we're doing is pretty reliable, but with a calm object, it's super reliable and fat, much faster. And so if it, and if it was also something I wasn't just doing one time, I'd probably do it in a more robust way. But just as an example of how easy it is, right? You can, you can activate any program and, you know, copy and paste. Um, you can, you can tell it, you can give it mouse coordinates about where the, the coordinates are that you want to paste. So if you don't always know, if you know where that cell is, a specific spot, you can tell it to go exactly there. Um, thanks, Brad. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's let's. We're right at the hour. Let's go ahead and um, stop the recording, and then we'll start it back up again. If I can ever find, oh, there's the window. Stop recording.